so uh, so good afternoon everyone thanks for joining this uh, uh, webinar session uh, facilitated by the agile network india mumbai chapter this is our topic of discussion for ensuring success in vuca conditions okay so i'll be the facilitator uh, facilitator for this particular event with me uh, there are uh, my four of my colleagues uh, uh, namely pinky shah uh, uh, mukda deshpande anand kulkarni and arvind tiwari so this will be a quick introduction of the panelists uh, so my name is amok suktankar uh, i am a pmp itl v3 scale agile framework certified scrum master product owner product manager ic agile certified coach and also uh, facilitation uh, certified also panman management certified professional uh, with the lean six sigma green belt i do have more than 20 plus years of work experience uh, in it program management delivery and account management i have set up lot of program management office to um, lot of big bfsi customers uh, in across the globe uh, i'm being an agile enthusiast for last more than 6 plus years i have worked in different agile frameworks such as scrum lean kanban and safe safe where i have started my career and definitely scrum i have used and kanban also i have used i have i do have rich experience in managing the complex transformational project as a capacity as a program manager engagement manager uh, project manager and delivery manager and i do have experience uh, in the bfsi manufacturing and crm domain okay anand would you like to uh, present your experience sir? yeah good evening everyone uh, thanks to nai for giving this opportunity to share our ideas and thanks to everyone who's attending today i hope you enjoy the session my name is anand kulkarni i have been uh, in the industry it industry for more than eight, 28 years uh, uh, right from the client server era like uh, you know fox pro visual basic power builder uh, mainframe and you name it i've worked on all the possible technology you can think of so past 20 years has been primarily on a saas based uh, solution vms solution it was a startup in 2000 and it has been on the cloud when very few people knew what cloud was so it has roughly a, a user base of 20 million today and it is uh, it has been on the top uh, you know 10 it's among the top 10 uh, product in that particular category for the last 10 to 15 years and it is it has about a user base of 20 plus million across 180 countries and it is still going strong uh, this startup was eventually acquired by a leading erp solution five years ago and it's again still rated among the top uh, top and top uh, developer by heart i still actively design solution for customers and manage a lot of diverse projects within that product and i have a team across mumbai bangalore and uh, bangalore yeah over to you amok thank you very much anand uh, arvind Hi everybody, my name is uh, Arvind Tibari. I am currently working as an independent agile trainer, coach, and a consultant. I have more than 19 plus years of experience in the IT industry as a solutions focused technocrat. Uh, more recently, I have been engaged in setting up and leading a project management office, managing complex, strategic, global, cross functional programs, coached teams and management on agile led uh, enterprise level agile transformations and scaling across the organization uh, i primarily specialize in the e-learning education domain as well as the mapping and location intelligence platform side of things uh, i'm passionate about agility and uh, continuous improvement through innovations uh, and then simplification automation that's about me thank you very much Mugda. Hey, thanks. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's great to see you all on a Saturday afternoon. Thanks for joining in. Um, so I'm an executive director. I did my early, I mean, my master's in education from Georgia State University, Atlanta, and uh, have been um, uh, definitely engineer at heart. So started a lot of product development side of things. Uh, spent around 11 years there and then moved, um, moved back to India. Uh, I have played uh, very crucial roles in terms of engineering transformations, um, moving from monoliths to distributed world, um, entire DevOps and agile journey, and um, looking into different domains. So started with retail, 
uh, in credit scoring and then um, uh, recent is more into ticketing and uh, cybersecurity data platform side of things. So love challenges and um, thought leadership and, and love to work with people. So it's, it's all about people um, and looking forward to the discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Pinky Shah and um, I'm actually uh, currently working for a leading business information company and have about 24 years experience in information industry and financial markets and uh, I have been specializing in different areas like product management, product development management, program management where I lead a portfolio of products and uh, basically managing the portfolio of products, including product development, including, you know, uh, managing high performance product development teams to deliver data via platform, Excel and uh, uh, API solutions. I'm very passionate about project management and uh, essentially uh, uh, focus on search and data discovery solutions using metadata and taxonomy. So uh, I'm excited for today's panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start the discussion. Uh, Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, session. So, uh, so the uh, so we'll be starting a session called ensuring success in uh, VUCA condition. So, uh, so we'll start with the first discussion point. Basically, what is VUCA? What is VUCA? And you know, what are the some of the examples our panel will share? So, what is VUCA stand for? VUCA is basically V stands for volatility. Uh, U stands for uncertainty, C stands for complexity, and A stands for ambiguity. So normally in today's world, we face a lot of uh, market is very volatile. There's a lot of uncertainty in the life. Pandemic has come into the picture. We work in a very complex environment where, you know, uh, the application where we are supporting having complex interdependency, and there's a lot of ambiguity uh, in our uh, in our day-to-day -day activities also. Normally, whenever we are working in any of the environments, right, we don't know what is what we will get in our next uh, you know requirement for the customer he may he, he or she may never give any requirement to the fullest extent we, there is always been ambiguity in the life so how we tackle this in the in the overall today's market environment that is where our focus will be so definitely our panels will share their uh, thought processes uh, on this and you know we'll go we'll we'll go we'll go this uh, discussion uh, so i will request mugda uh, to share uh, 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 her views on by giving some examples on the VUCA. Sure. Um, so um, let's let's take the first one, volatility. Um, it, uh, the pure English definition of volatility is is actually rapid and unexpected challenges. Uh, and we've been through this, and I'm sure everybody on this call have seen this uh, in their own work environments, even at work. Um, at home or at work. So I will, I'll share an example uh, because I've been through this myself and um, uh, let's talk about mergers and acquisitions. You can be on either side. You can be the company who's getting acquired or you can be the company who's acquiring another company or your, your two companies who are getting merged. Uh, one thing that happens typically is definitely a lot of uncertainties in terms of how the overall people structure going to be, how the organization needs to evolve, uh, what kind of processes we need to cater to, how do we merge the two companies, uh, what kind of tech stack is going to be there, right? Common platform, technology goals, feature set, uh, let's figure out um, what stays, what doesn't. Um, so there will be a lot of different integrations that you'll need to think through. So that, that makes it a little volatile. You don't know exactly how many um, unexpected challenges will be thrown at you. And at that time, uh, you need to be prepared in terms of research. You'll know what two companies are all about. You'll need to figure out a plan. You'll need to create a vision. And you'll need to figure out what the target system looks like, what the target org structure looks like. And that's one way to handle it. And uh, we'll, across the discussion today, we'll kind of set some examples and key practices which will guide you towards that process. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mugda. Uh, 
that was a good share uh, pinky would you like to share uh, your ideas with this uncertainty perspective thank you Ambo. uh well uncertainty basically is like lack of predictability of uh, future and uh, I think the most relevant example is the current pandemic situation where most organizations at global or domestic level are actually affected, right? And the way, uh, you know, businesses and economies uh, have been really badly affected. And at micro level, you know, it's so uncertain that you cannot plan uh, any business outlook and there's no clarity of the future. So uh, this, what exactly happens uh, here? Is it pushes businesses to innovate, to deliver new solutions, to look uh, at the changing needs of the clients and reinvent and to reorganize the teams and uh, be agile in delivering value added solutions to the clients. Back to Thank you, Amok. You. Thank you very much. So Anand, would you like to share your thought process from a complexity perspective? And you're you're Sorry. Yeah. So, so what is complexity? Anything that is not linear is complexity. And unfortunately, the complexity has become the norm now. So as per the definition of complexity, you know, complex systems have many diverse parts that are highly interconnected and interdependent, but capable of adaptation. And typical reasons for this complexity are scale of operations. Uh, diverse diversity of operations involved degree of connectivity and dependency on each other finally the pace of changes right i mean these are the uh, typical reasons for complexity to to manage complexity we first need to understand the model of that complexity uh, understand the systems uh, how do they work together and uh, all the other parameters and then uh, and obviously with this we also need to understand the environment which is the structure and behavior uh, typical examples of complexity are, you know, supply chain network with many different uh, products and distributors interacting and adapting to each other. Other examples are financial markets. Internet is a beautiful example of complexity and uh, flight networks. Yeah. So that summarizes about complexity. Amok, over to you, Amok. Amok, you are on mute. Uh, Arvind, sorry, thank you very much. So, Arvind, would you like to share your thought processes? Uh, sure. So, in VUCA, the A stands for ambiguity, uh, which means you know things are open to more than one interpretation. So, if we look at the situation where you neither have sufficient information now, nor can you predict outcomes, there are no precedents. There is no right or a wrong answer. Uh, which means you're essentially facing unknown unknowns, right? So that's that's the ambiguity part. One of the key contributors to ambiguity is the fast pace of change. And people who actually crave structure and control would typically have the most challenging time dealing with ambiguity. Uh, it also makes employees insecure. And uh, ambiguity mainly would cause inefficiencies and missed opportunities. However, a leader still has to make important decisions with ambiguous information. And one simple way of dealing with this would be to seek different perspectives, seek inputs from different key stakeholders. Now, let's take an example of uh, one of my previous organizations wherein they were working on a cutting edge problem. And when I say cutting edge, Naturally, there are no precedents. The technology is cutting edge, so you do not really know. Uh, and there's a lot of ambiguity surrounding it, uh, which approach works best. And there were multiple teams that were parallelly working on this solution because some teams were acquired through mergers and things like that. And interestingly, the CTO allowed these multiple teams to continue parallelly working on that same problem statement. Now. For you and me, this might seem counterproductive. It might seem inefficient. However, it is important to understand that adaptiveness, which is required to deal with ambiguity, is not achieved at zero cost, right? And it requires flexibility 
experimentation redundancy, which comes at the cost of the efficiencies that you have in stability. So to deal with ambiguity, instead of maximizing efficiency, adaptive companies actually accept and encourage the variations and the redundancy because it helps them to learn new and better ways of managing change. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much, Arvind, and everyone for your uh, good thoughts. I really liked it. So let us move quickly. So now uh, we know now we have covered what Yuka is, and we gave some good examples. Now, so normally, you know, we face a lot of challenges, you know, because of VUCA, right? Because VUCA itself is a lot of, because of VUCA, we may face a lot of issues or challenges. So we will discuss some of the challenges, and we I request all panelists to share their ideas on those aspects. So Mugda, would you like to share some of the uh, insights or challenges in a real-time business world in a VUCA, VUCA perspective? Yeah, sure. So uh, I, I'll, I'll go with a very um, common situation that, that I'm sure you all have seen. Um, so there is, uh, there is a new requirement that has come up. Uh, it can be a complete new concept that you are adding to your current feature set, or it can be a brand new product that you're trying to launch. And um, the challenge would be, how do you know, are we building the right thing? Um, how do you know um, whether this is gonna be even accepted in the market or not? And you will definitely be uh, PV to all the four um, VUCA there because you will have ambiguity in terms of do I know what the requirements are, how complex it is. Uh, there would be uncertainties about revenue side of things, um, and there would be consistent uh, challenges around it. So, so how do we look at certain things in here? So, I'll, I'll give you an example which which I myself have run into. Uh, it's related to a cybersecurity offering, and uh, you must have seen by now, it's a very highly competitive market, very cr uh, crowded. You'll see a lot of vulnerability scanners. You'll see a lot of things out there, um, uh, and it's 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 a competitive landscape to look for. So when we, when we try to do something new there, uh, spend a good amount of time designing, productionizing, and the whole microservices, gamut, cloud, all of it, and um, as it goes, we figured out um, we don't have a lot of customers. We, we, we were not very sure exactly what happened there. So we started going back to design board and figure out what exactly we needed. Uh, do we need to start with a big design or do we need to start small? So one thing that helped us a lot there was going lean, going through like a startup mode. Uh, while we, we are a big firm, big team, but we wanted to kind of shrink our things into smaller increments. So we all read a book, Lean Startup, uh, Eric Rice, and we, we kind of followed some model from there. So we created mockups of some real world use cases, real data types, uh, understand the end user first and created prototyping around it, seek a lot of feedback, prototype one, two, three. At some point we had like eight prototypes um, that went and uh, it gave us some immediate feedback and it was pure mock-ups, sometimes just spreadsheets. And once we knew what that right thing to build was, uh, we started focusing on the design and actual productionization side of things. It did help save a lot of time, a lot of efficiencies gained, and we did not have to involve five scrum teams. We actually started with few um, uh, prototyping uh, experts and, and we worked towards that way. So, um, so that's that's an example where uh, and and it's a common challenge that you'll run into. But as you think through smaller agi agility um, increments and seeking early feedback, you'll see that um, you're able to overcome some of these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Pinky, would you like to share your ideas on on this? Sure. sure. Okay, I'd like to take on from the earlier theme of uncertainty. Here, uh, basically taking example of the uh, information uh, business uh, that I mean, solutions that worked earlier may not actually work in the new normal, which is the current pandemic normal. And it's important to recognize this and it's important to sense the user needs and to be agile to adapt and scale up and improve your solutions, right? So uh, this was an experience we had with academic users, you know, suddenly our IP, uh, uh, IP users, the academic users, uh, their need really changed during pandemic as students moved home and they needed uh, remote access. So remote accessibility became the new normal. 
So we had to, uh, you know, recognize this and we had to ensure that we provide this seamless remote access to our services. And uh, we did that and we adapted to uh, the remote accessibility, uh, ensuring that all our academia users had SSO capability and improving penetration. This actually helped us to improve penetration in the academia space. Uh, another example I'd like to give is, uh, you know, we had uh, some China users during this pandemic who started facing slowness in the service speed. And we actually sensed this and, um, you know, we very quickly migrated the users from AWS US to AWS China, which actually improved the speed to the service by 35%. So these are some instances, you know, where uh, you need to be very sensitive, uh, sensitive to what's happening and adapt uh, very quickly and be agile to overcome these uncertainties. Back to you, Amor. Thank you very much for, for sharing some good thought. Thank you. So Arvind, would you like to share your ideas on this? Sure. Uh, let, let me speak about complexity with an example. So most of you would have used maps or navigation technology for either booking cabs or you know, routing yourself from one place to another, or even simply for finding some location specific information. Now, due to the technological innovations and disruptions, there has been an exponential growth in the amount of data which is available uh, for making and maintaining such location information platforms. Now, Manual collection and processing of location data through, say, satellite imagery or drive files cannot be scaled effectively to process this enormous additional data. I mean, like if I use 1,000 employees to produce data by manually going through satellite imagery, I would now need hundreds of thousands or lakhs of uh, you know employees just to look at that uh, amount of data that we are getting through probes, through connected IoT devices, and things like that. Now, while this challenging opportunity is created by technology or the data created by technology, interestingly, the solution to this complex problem also lies in technology. So this challenge was effectively managed by the organization by using machine learning and artificial intelligence to automate the processing of such huge data sets. Now, which enabled the organizations to create an up-to-date location platform. And not just that, it also allowed them to use this additional data that they were processing to create wonderful innovative products. So that would be one good example of how the complexity part of VUCA uh, could be managed uh, by quick adaptation. Thank you very much, everyone. So Anand, would you like to share your ideas? On this, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly summarize this. I think uh, changing dynamics, right? Who doesn't know about the current uh, pandemic? I think we mobilized, I think I had a team member of 200 plus, we mobilized all of them to work from home within two days' time. That is the that is all the notice we got. And secondly, you know, in order to adapt to this thing, I mean, we had no choice to trust people, I mean, develop trust in people because unlike earlier where everybody was physically present at work, uh, you had a face-to-face -face conversation and all the discussion happened face-to-face. -face. With this sudden change, obviously you have to adapt and you have no choice but to adapt. And then uh, to, con to monitor the productivity, you could devise some you know, mechanisms or some, some processes to control uh, how the output goes on. So that is one big change uh, that I think everybody has gone through. Second challenge is basically, you know, uh, in this, uh, you know, in this, uh, in this world right now, right? I mean, uh, if you look at customers, I mean, uh, they are very demanding. Uh, they are very demanding, and they are very high expectations on whatever you deliver, uh, be it products, be it services, or anything that you can, you are offering them. So, so however great your product is, you may be the top most product in the world in that particular domain, but if you don't deliver. Uh, consistently for a couple of times, then they have the choice to move to different products and the products are available due, due to the competitive market, right? I mean, they're, they are easily available. Apparently, you know, every uh, product company, uh, I will talk for myself, I mean, 
you know who your competitors competitors are and you know who are the unhappy customers so if you know the top three competitors you know how to switch you know how to get uh, have you, how to onboard those customers quickly onto your system by devising some integration tools and all so this is the norm of you know that uh, the current world yeah that is what i would like to summarize it yeah amok thanks to you amok thank you very much thank you very much anand for sharing your valuable thoughts so let me share my thoughts on on this front so normally in today's world you know there are a lot of technological changes are happening so i'll give one of the example where my, my, me and myself team were working so customer uh, were working on seven application uh, for one of the top four companies uh, in a advisory phase uh, you know uh, did a domain wherein they want to develop the application on earlier on they were decided they will work on only uh, the desktop version but one fine day morning they thought no as there were a lot of uh, the the service guys were visiting a lot of customers so they thought they they want to have that same application on the mobile also with the response to web design came into the picture and our team was not even aware what response to web designing was and how to develop that and there's a, then our architecture team had decided they have to learn a technological angular js i'm i'm talking hardly two or three years back so and our team was completely unaware but the adaptive adaptation of the change and how we have delivered the same application which are earlier developed on a desktop same application we have developed on mobile that was what we, that that we have developed completely on sharepoint as a uh, base or sharepoint as a framework we have used but point of intention what i'm talking here is the adaptation of the change because normally as a we there lot of things are happening in the market we don't know what is going to happen in future so when the customer demand is coming because he 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 is needing because of the xyz reason and we have to provide those services so that they can be retain that customer and they will get the end business value there so in in this particular scenario we have our team has developed the required skill on the job and they have delivered and we got a very good customer feedback and which was very good for our company uh, as a whole where we can go and market ourselves so this were the one of the um, uh, you know uh, uh, challenges which i have faced there's another challenges which i have faced in the past with the merger and acquisition normally there's one of the biggest thing which is happening when one company being acquired and normally i, I was uh, there is one application which was doing the same job in the, both the uh, the acquiring company and acquire company so i we need to do a proper gap analysis and you know we need to ensure which are the good good features which are there in a company and which are there in b company and we need to ensure how we can able to breach breach those and how we should able to deliver those within the time frame so these are all uncertain event which may happen and being a being a it service providing company which where, where i was working in we need to provide and adjust those so that deliver to the end customer so such such challenges we may face in our day to day life and we should be we should able to take those in a positively and we should go ahead and you know address those so these were some of the you know challenges uh, which i uh, you know which which uh, myself has faced in the past okay so now we discuss what is vuka and we have covered what are the challenges now let go step further discussing you know our thought process where how our leadership team which is the backbone for any of the projects which are working on any of the program we are working on how the leaders will adapt or respond okay on this vuka world condition okay so anand would you like to share uh, any of your thought processes uh, about the leadership aspect perspective absolutely yeah there are couple of things that i want to share uh, primarily i think uh, leader is the one who leads from front takes uh, decisions i mean and uh, you know this is a very essential trait of a leader second is uh, i think as uh, pinky has already shared right uh, uh, what worked earlier will not work now and we have to change so the, when you say change you have to revisit your strategies revisit your goals and missions and to see what what is the current demand and then adapt to it that being agile then uh, you know uh, the, in terms of product development you know uh, you know we have a capacity for every month or for every release you know if you if you if you break that capacity into strategic items customer ask ui analytics architecture you you are you are balancing that entire act in in a beautiful way so that is the very uh, you know essential part of it 
secondly i would focus on people uh, people people you know you cannot do without people i mean you have to keep them motivated you have to you know assign them challenging work because today if if the work gets boring people want to quit and then look for something challenging something new the third is uh, provide them avenues to learn within the project as well as outside uh, so that so that they are up to date with the latest technologies and lastly communication uh, you know communication from a front that you know a leader needs to communicate with his masses and at every step he has to uh, take the buy in from his people to move forward so he needs uh, the communication is a key factor there uh, lastly i would uh, you know summarize on one of the i mean one of the uh, changes that we did recently i mean if you look at the current pandemic right a lot of people lost their jobs uh, and while there were few people who who don't want to move from the existing job because they don't want to get relocated they want, don't want to try a new organization so for the customers who had the need of people very badly they were struggling in the market very bad uh, my product caters to the contingent workforce and uh, what we did was we keep quickly de designed a solution which was implemented in like two three two weeks time or three weeks time uh, what we did was we we allowed to allow the vendors to pull in their uh, you know candidates who were unemployed or were looking for a change in that particular pool and we we gave the customers access to that pool so that they can search people who they want and get them on board quickly and since these people were laid off they could they took the offer within couple of days time rather than uh, rather than the lead time of 3 to 4 weeks it was earlier so that is how we adapted and we quickly moved to something which will help the customers as well as the vendors yeah that summarizes uh, uh, my part uh, amog thank you very much anand so arvin would you like to share uh, your ideas on this particular topic please sure so here we are talking about leaders and in terms of uh, vuca environment the increased pressure and expectations which is placed on leaders to succeed means that they need the appropriate ability and the mindset to navigate these challenges now to achieve success in this vuca world leaders must be agile they must be resilient be innovative mentally prepared to manage through the uncertainty and courageous to take uh, prudent risks now when i say leaders i just don't mean cxos right every team and individual should act as a leader to adapt and respond during the vuca times so having a resilient mindset means you know coming back from the setbacks you should constantly be sensing by analyzing data by monitoring trends uh, to to understand how your team how your department or the organization at large is prone to specific elements of the vuca environment and then based on this you should be ready to act fast to address the challenges which are provoked by these specific components of vuca now to give you a few examples at an organization level one of my previous organizations which was dealing in discrete legacy products thought that going forward with the change in uh, uh, technology etc that would not really you know make them successful so they shifted their complete strategy from discrete products they aligned with the ecosystem of partners and they actually changed their strategy to that of a platform strategy so instead of discrete products they now offer a platform uh, that's uh, available to all so that's at the organization level of how they adapted by changing strategy similarly at the team level if i want to give an example now not at all times the time cost and resources would allow you to try multiple approaches to check what is feasible when you are developing new products or for a new market right so at such a time uh, the leadership quickly set up a tiger team which is a team of specialists of cross functional members and they collaborated to quickly finalize what should be the mvp and the mnp for a proposed technical solution and presented a poc with some estimates uh, the funding was approved in quick time and the team started iterative releases 
So that's a good example of how teams can manage in VUCA by being adaptive. And at large, if you look at the current pandemic, you can see a lot many examples of quick adaptation. So for example, everyone still needs to eat during this lockdown, right? And there is a need of variety. With the restaurants closed, people who cook at home would certainly agree that it has been overwhelming. And now with this, did you observe that there is a huge increase in a ready-to-eat products that are available in the market during this phase? So that's quick adaptation that is taken by some vendors. Uh, another small-time player that I can think of is this is a small manufacturing unit that used to create reusable jute and cloth bags before the pandemic hit. And this was you know, going green. They wanted to ensure that people use these bags instead of plastic bags. And the pandemic hit, and now they're not really having a lot of business. Interestingly, they shifted their focus, used their tailors who manufacture the machines that they use to stitch. And instead of using jute and cloth reusable bags, they started making face masks to rise up to this challenge of pandemic. So these are some very good examples of how you know individuals, large organizations can adapt during Buka. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So Mugda, would you like to share your ideas on this front page? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Um, uh, I know Anand and Arvind have um, uh, spoken about a lot of um, key areas, and I'll just kind of tag along and add to what they have said. Um, so as a leader, I would definitely want to know how much do I know about a situation or a challenge at a hand? When we talk about VUCA condition, the complexities, the uncertainties, um, I need to do my own research, I need to understand, and I need to empower my teams, uh, under, uh, do that data point analysis myself, and also get my people, my team members, and people around me engaged in the decision making there. Um, and the next thing that I would want to know is how do I predict the results of my actions? Um, how do I measure them? Um, how do I keep them time bound? So those are a few areas which uh, which we definitely should look at. And um, I'll share an example where which has helped me a lot. Um, at some point, we were trying to figure out how do we get more efficient as an as an engineering organization. And there were a lot of areas where we felt there was manual work happening. We could do more uh, in terms of efficiencies. We can innovate more, but it's just that you are so tied up in your regular day-to-day -day life. You are so tied up in terms of areas. Um, what we did was we said, okay, let's take a step back. Um, let's get some time off and um, let's look at something like a hackathon. And, and let's do it at the engineering wide level. And this can be done at a smaller or a bigger scale as needed. Uh, we ask people to just submit their ideas. It can be any idea, big, small, anything that you feel is gonna add efficiencies, anything that's that's gonna add on to our capabilities, something that you'll be proud of. And we got tons and tons of such amazing ideas. It's it's the power of people as, as you heard from one of my colleagues. So we got, um, um, we got those different ideas. We set up a small task force, which kind of looked at these ideas and prioritized them, um, looked at, looking at the ones which are more aligned towards our overall long-term goals, uh, made them a little bit more smart goals. So they are something that can be achievable in a smaller time frame. And we asked teams to self-organize. So after being self-organized, these smaller pods were formed and we were given like two weeks to look at these and implement them within the current nuances of the architecture and things that would make our lives more better. And to date, we've been using tons of ideas in, in our day-to-day -day life. And, and it, was, it was an amazing celebration and, and, a, and within a smaller time, power of people showed and, and we were able to solve a lot of those small, small uh, um, uh, non-efficient things. And it did bring in a lot of um, innovation angle to it. So, um, uh, so in a very nutshell, embrace change and uh, look at those smaller incremental results and bring in all, all of the people together, uh, get them motivated, empowered to take action and, and keep those smaller, smarter goals and do something different, which will make you uh, solve things and uh, make you aware of what's around you and uh, be able to succeed there. So thanks. Thank you very much. So Pinky, would you like to share your ideas on this, on this front? Uh, thank you, Amo. So uh, basically, as a leader of a uh, product development team, I think it's very important to, uh, you know, doing the right things, to have a very clear vision that three or five years down the line, 
you know, where, uh, you know, do I see uh, the business information space? Would the users be using, continue using uh, or uh, accessing data and content through platform? Or would they move to mobile? Would they uh, prefer to use data in a raw form and uh, uh, within their data lakes so that they can do several things? Uh, they can visualize, use Tableau and different visualization tools. So it's very important to have a vision of three to five years down the line where exactly you want to go. And it's also important because it helps to tackle volatility. And with that vision in mind, it's important to clearly define the goals, the KPIs of the team, to reorganize the team if needed. It's important to look, uh, you know, how competition is evolving and to listen to your clients' needs and how the needs are evolving. Uh, so one example I'd like to give is uh, basically, uh, you know, earlier we used to outsource our search technology. Uh, so as a vision, we want to be the best business information company, right? And for that, we need a lot of flexibility and data discovery is primary to our users. So with that in mind, we decided to take control of search technology and we had to reorganize the team, uh, set up software engineers, testers, uh, uh, you know, make sure they have the relevant skill. And then we migrated to Elasticsearch, which is like an open source uh, technology. We ensured that this actually, this control of search gave us a lot of uh, flexibility in, uh, you know, improving the relevance. Improving relevance is so important for a user so that whenever they are looking for data content, they are sure they are actually uh, getting the right thing on the service. So, uh, so this is uh, one example of how you can actually take charge, take control, adapt and be agile to come up with new solutions that really benefit you and uh, that will help and deliver value to the users in less time. So back to you. Thank you very much, Pinky. So let me share some of my thoughts on the same subject topic, you know, uh, the leadership, as leadership aspect we are currently discussing. So basically, uh, definitely there are two aspects which I can currently think of, okay? So basically, tr uh, the leadership should, uh, you know, trust as a leader for him himself and also for the team. Because if I am being a leader, if I, I need to set a right example to in front of my team, also I should be very trustworthy enough so, to sharing all the required information to the team so, so that they will be aware, aware, you know, they will be knowing what is the business value, what we're delivering. If there will not be trust, transparency, what normally we discuss all these uh, agile principles, right? The trust, transparency, all those are very critical from leadership angle perspective, wherein those, those aspects need to be considered while considering for any leadership aspect. So that is also very important aspect which I can think of. Also the collaboration. Collaboration, uh, the, the leadership team should always cascade the right information to the right audience from the, if, if any vice president wants to uh, give any product information, definitely he has to transfer or uh, you know, uh, transfer the information from his, from his level to his subordinate levels. So, so that that required information should reach to the required audience at the right time. If without the required uh, information will not reach the right audience, there may be a problem in the future or they may not get a, uh, the clear information for the overall business value or overall the product for which they are working in. So these are the some of the aspects from the leadership angle uh, which I can think of. So I think we have got three points so far. So I think let us move quickly to the latest business, you know, digitalized world we are talking about call, you know, a lot of buzzwords such as digital transformation. So we will like to see how digital transformation can able to help the overall VUCA world. Okay, so I'll request Anand, okay, to share his ideas on those particular topic, please. Yeah, sure, Amog. Uh, I think a few of you have already touched upon these uh, topics already, I'll, but I'll reiterate. I think uh, digitalization is the topmost priority of all organizations now. They cannot survive without that. That is very evident. Secondly, I think uh, Arvind spoke about RPA and I think a few others spoke about ML and analytics. Analytics. So RPA, yes, it's very important where you know you can use utilize RPA to automate your routine jobs and then you, your team can then focus on some newer challenges in the business. 
coming to ml and ana analytics you can provide very insightful uh, information to the customers so that they can take some informed decisions and finally uh, one example from my my product was basically you know we used to of the support tickets when we analyze close to 40% were related to passwords and usernames so by introducing chatbots we got rid of that load of the support so that they could concentrate on bigger problems faced by the customers and solve them so in in a nutshell these were the four things and finally not to forget a paytm uh, i don't know whether uh, i mean there is some analysis uh, outside uh, which has been uh, published recently where paytm recorded four times growth in may and june that is uh, that is humongous and obviously all the other modes of online payments also increase increase multifold yeah that in a nutshell is what my perspective is over perfect. to you amok yeah it was perfect good good point you have provided the digital transformation digital payment yes i do agree so arvin would you like to share your uh, ideas on digital transformation point uh sure so in addition to the apparent advantages of digital transformations like the speed the accuracy the productivity that it brings along one key advantage of digital transformation is also that it enables you with a lot of rich data to make effective data driven decisions and useful personalized products now be very respectful of data privacy and conscious of data protection regulations across the world uh while we do that uh now let me take an example we have all been using dynamic traffic data aggregated from multiple sources to enable efficient route planning so if you have ever used a map for directions you would dread the dark red color on those map showing you that there is dense traffic there now there is just one example of how data is aggregated from multiple sources now consider a scenario going a few years down the line where you have all these cars which are connected over 5g they have a lot of their own sensors like the rain sensors the rpm sensors which can constantly gauge information on the road and using 5g can actually uh, while they are you know analyzing this data at the edge in the car itself also transfer that data to a say neutral location platform using you know 5g technology now this previously siloed data because most of the cars have turned into computers now with a lot of uh, computing that happens in the car itself now this information from sensors and this siloed data is now transferred over the network stored on the cloud and then analyzed and last but not the least there are applications that can be built utilizing this data you know to provide innovative services and products so so each of these individual parts are useful the whole platform is much greater than the sum of these individual functionalities so i would say the digital transformation provides tremendous potential allowing use of previously siloed information to now provide useful personalized services thanks thank you very much uh, arvin uh, pinky would you like to share your ideas on uh, on this one please uh, amok thank you so uh, in terms of digital transformation i think we were uh, very early on had identified market opportunities here and especially uh, uh, you know i'd like to give example where we uh, you know use artificial intelligence and machine learning especially to tag our uh, content and data now for us this was very important uh, that it not only saved cost in terms of resources but it absolutely automated the whole tagging process and um, this not only automated the tagging process but actually gave us new opportunities because then we could come up with feeds with different topics that we could use machine learning to very quickly turn around so uh, example for example negative news we could you know really create negative news across 
countries, 150 countries for more than 6 million companies and come up with feed solutions, right? So, uh, you know, we were uh, like very quick in identifying that machine learning and artificial intelligence was a, like a fundamental need for a business. Uh, if you want to grow, if you want to diversify in terms of our offering and, uh, you know, try to cater to our client needs. Back to you, Amu. Very much. Uh, uh, so, Mugda, would you like to share your ideas? Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll kind of go towards the same uh, logic there. Um, data is the new oil. So, how you look at large-scale data and help make result-oriented decisions, uh, provide insights um, that will help tackle uncertainty. So, talk about VUCA world, right? You're trying to um, look into a lot of different patterns. And I'll, I'll go back to my cybersecurity example there. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, self-assessing a particular ecosystem, um, we had to kind of look at trends. And uh, for that, we had tons of data. And um, what helped there was looking at patterns and looking at industry data, like how your company of this size stands in terms of threats and vulnerabilities. How can you protect yourself in the digitized world when you're privy to certain vulnerabilities of that of that particular segment and based on that a lot of decisions were made by our, our customers and that helped tackle that kind of uncertainty for them and help them become more um, sophisticated in terms of their own uh, protection of ecosystem um, the next example would be towards resiliency so think about uh, your production systems how can you handle those peaks and load conditions so look at the data how look at the trends Look at the uh, timings when you will see the peaks and ebbs. So monitoring, troubleshooting, self-healing uh, based on the conditions that we know. And with cloud, we are able to see all of these things and it's kind of very easy. It's at the tip of your fingers. With containerization, we are able to simulate conditions. We are able to protect ourselves from those changes which can happen suddenly. And um, one of the areas is kind of just set up a, a complete perf environment, performance testing environment, where you can simulate that kind of load conditions. And you are you are in turn preparing yourself for those uncertainties that you may be privy to in future. And if I have to give you a very scaled down work example that's just happened near me, um, there is a nice bakery and we love to order a lot of things from there uh, near our, uh, our vicinity. And with, with, with the pandemic, things were completely halted and um, how they went from that small mom and pop store to a complete online way of doing things. There was a form which was shared and then based on how you order, um, they came up with this brilliant uh, small portal and now you can pretty much order everything and there is a no touch delivery that's coming to our house. Uh, they're packaging this whole DIY kits and you can pick and choose what goes in there and they've started shipping in it. It started very small, place where I would go and buy things is now a complete uh, digitized way, way of experience and 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 it, it, it has transformed their business and I think they possibly are making more money uh, than before so um, so so digitization definitely can can help you go a long way and um, use it to all your benefit and especially leverage all the data points um, to help you in terms of large scale thank you thank you very much for sharing your good thoughts uh, so let me share some of my thoughts, you know, so I was working with one of the customer, okay, wherein uh, he was working with different vendors and, you know, normally they are working with a lot of change requests and they have to create every time they have to create different contract management system and the customer being a very financial related customer, they do a lot of, you know, uh, intricacy or they have to follow certain processes and and any change request is to come to us, we used to estimate, we used to wait when the contract is signed, we have, a lot of emails were floating between, you know, uh, uh, uh between customer and vendor and it was a lot of problems and all the such requirements because they're working in the financial domain due to some of the regulatory regulatory body they have to make those changes as soon as possible and that is a very specific reason they have to do a change request and we are working in the traditional waterfall model not in agile way by the way so very um when they then we thought that we should help our customer by creating some system which will enable them to entire digitize the process so entire contract management process wherein it has to flow from different application providers or different approval providers okay it has to pass from a to b to c and entire process has to be digitized so all the manual work we have removed so definitely earlier we have spoken rpa also one of the initiative in one of my engagement uh, we have done it 
but one of the things which i can think of uncertainty perspective definitely was uh, due to the some of the changes in the market we have to do those changes and contract management was the one of the application where they are working in and we have completely digitized that entire contract management system and a lot of to and fro between the uh, parties has been completely reduced so this which i can think of okay um, let us move to the last uh, point of discussion today uh, uh, which will more talk about the key success uh, which is required uh, for the business in currently in VUCA world. Okay, so I have seen some of the questions uh, on those fronts. So I hope by uh, by going through this question, this topic of discussion, we should be able to answer uh, some of the points. So first, I can think of the we should have a clear vision, right? Whenever you are working on any of the initiative, we should have a vision, goal, and why are we doing this? That is where the why part is always important. We should always ask why are we doing this what benefit i will what benefit i will get normally we have heard it five why so definitely we should think and where the vision is also so if any whenever i'm working any of the engagement i always ensure what is the vision and what business value we are getting to the customer and why why vision is so important because we will it will give clear direction to the to the uh, the stakeholders also the team where we are heading also it will definitely provide the focus to the entire team members that okay this is my vision and this vision i need to achieve similarly it will provide a different kind of motivation and uh, to the entire team members and uh, you know it will inspire them to you know keep going to achieve that particular vision for which they are targeting and last but not the least it always help us uh, to you know keep the team moving forward and move through the obstacles right so team always feel a lot of obstacles in day to day work right so where the team, the management support and team should be uh, you know uh, proactive enough to answer those to or you no know, proactive enough to raise those uh, obstacles so that we will get addressed at the right moment so these so basically vision is very much important uh, in the business uh, you know uh, for key success uh, in the in business world in buka perspective so, uh, so I will ask Pinky, you know, uh, to share her ideas uh, uh, on those front from the business success perspective. Uh, uh, hi, Amog. Yes, uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, when it comes to uh, business success, it's important to have vision. Vision on where, as a team, as a department, where do you want to go in? you know, two, three years of time. And you need to have very clear goals and KPIs for the team uh, in terms of what they need to do. And they need to, of course, relate to the overall business goal. And they need to be reminded that the efforts they are putting collectively, how they are working towards fulfilling the business goals. That's very important to keep the teams motivated and pushed, you know, all the time that, okay, what you're doing, is actually contributing to the organization's, uh, you know, uh, success in terms of increase in sales, in terms of, you know, uh, increase in number of clients. So they really need to, your team needs to feel connected to the overall set of goals. And of course, it's very important that, you know, you have the agility in terms of adapting and you look, learn, understand what's happening around you in terms of competition, in terms of understanding the client needs and having agility to adapt very quickly. So I think these are paramount principles of ensuring success in VUCA world. Back to you. Thank you very much, Pinky, for sharing your ideas. Uh, Mugda, would you like to share uh, your thought process on this topic? Yeah. So um, I, I, I like to start with a story, actually. You may have heard this before, who moved my cheese? And um, basically there are two mouse stuck in a maze and they are kind of enjoying cheese. Cheese is an, a, a paradigm about what you are happy with, what like can be your place, your work, things around you. And um, one of the mouse is quite happy glory, just enjoying life and eating the cheese that he are, he's getting versus the other one, while enjoying life, eating the cheese that he has, he's continuously on the lookout. He's being aware of the changes around happening around him. He's continuously going out of the maze, trying to find new ways of getting the cheese. And then um, he would come back. Uh, the other happy glory guy is thinking, I don't know why this guy is doing that. But at the end of the day, uh, at some point, um, 
he did not even realize that his cheese is running out. And at some point, what happens is the cheese did, does run out and the one who's not prepared, who was just there enjoying life, actually was in a, in, a, in a situation that he did not have anything to eat versus the one who was continuously being aware of changes happening around him, was able to find a new location and was again back to his regular routine. So, so, so the point being, the reason I started with the story is uh, change is the only constant. And, and how do you prepare for it? How do you be aware of the changes that are happening around you and how you respond to it? Uh, imagine um, you, are, you are that mouse who has to continuously look for new cheese, who has to continuously figure out what's happening. Is my cheese running out? How will I prepare and find a new one? So how do you build that agility within you? As a leader, how do you help your teams be agile, be nimble, and think in small increments, uh, think about doing prototypes, think about doing experiments, but be able to accept changes, be able to fail fast and recover fast from it. Empowering and letting your team self-organize, using the digital transformation to your own um, advantage, using the DevOps to drive the automation strategy, um, reducing down the shipment timings and continuously being aware of what's changing in your competitive landscape. How will you prepare yourself and your team in the in the uncertain and, and volatile conditions? So. Um, that's the key takeaway that I would like to share with you all. Thank Thanks. you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Anand, would you like to share your ideas on this front? Yeah, I will primarily focus on people. I, I that is my favorite topic, and uh, yeah, and I think that is also very essential in this entire journey. I think uh, you know, uh, for product development, uh, product knowledge is key, and if you lose people, you lose that knowledge. And again, inducting a new person and getting them up to speed takes about anywhere from three to six months. That is, you know, you lose that time, right? So I would say, yeah, motivate your people in terms of, you know, um, make them like their work, uh, give them challenges, give them avenues to learn, keep them motivated, be in touch with them, They'll be, let be, there be a personal connect with them, right? I mean, that helps in, a, in the long run. And then uh, my uh, my formula is basically, I, I work towards, you know, making their work interesting so that they love to come to work every day. It's not like they're trying to avoid, uh, Monday morning should not be like a Monday morning. So here, my team, they love to come to work. That is what I aim for. And uh, and if, if you if you solve this problem, it automatically solves your customer problem. So that is one reason uh, you know my product uh, boasts about 99% uh, customer retention uh, over the last couple of years. Yeah, that is what I would like to summarize. Excellent, excellent to hear. Uh, uh, so Arvind, would you like to uh, conclude on this particular topic, please? Sure. I mean, like. A lot of very good points have already been talked about. So uh, the important aspects that were already covered, say, Amog, you talked about vision that we need at the top. Uh, Pinky then talked about how that vision gets translated into strategy by means of goals that bring clarity for the teams. And then Mukda talked about the important aspect of agility to manage changes. And uh, last but not the least, Anand talked about uh, people which are throughout, linked throughout. Um, another thing that I could add to this is, uh, say, innovation. So for any organization or even for an individual. Now, a natural tendency during VUCA is to press the brakes. You know, you want to hit the efficiencies, press the brakes, slow down. However, uh, as leaders, uh, we should consider taking prudent risks during these times. We should be open to experimenting with diversity. And for innovation, I would say we should promote more idea generation, be it through slack time for employees, 10%, 15% odd, where they can use their time to work on in, uh, you know, innovative activities, uh, uh, be it an internal marketplace of projects, wherein uh, employees can select which projects they want to contribute their extra time on, and tech forums and so on. So Mukda already covered a lot of these uh, points earlier about how hackathons and other things were used. So this would be one good way of generating innovation 
and then once you have these ideas the important idea is to then increase these ideas to convert it to for concepts not just to generate ideas and let them be there so once you've generated ideas generate pocs out of them that will help you generate good products and to be able to support that the leadership needs to uh, have a supportive culture which removes the bureaucracy which rewards experimentation and tolerates the failures right so that will help teams innovate so in short leaders will need to measure and manage the economics of their experimentation back to you thank you very much uh, arvin for concluding the entire business uh, perspective at a summarized perspective so i think we have covered the today's session now i will open the forum uh, from the question perspective so i can see uh, I, we have received around uh, around four to five question out of these three questions i think one question i have answered one question already anand had answered also one of the question which has been raised by gv that also has been answered so as of now there are only three open question we will see uh, consider time frame how we will go so i will take the first question which i can think is more uh, then we'll go sequentially which are the areas uh, uh, which needed to improve in order to be successful in vuka world okay so who would like to take this question amo i think arvin summarized that uh, very beautifully i think that question is kind of answered who has answered this question because i can't go and check so yeah, let me ask the uh, uh, amog i think arvind already summarized this uh, you know just a minute back uh, you know how to be successful in the book okay okay so i think that question is also covered so only two questions are open question now with so much innovation and technology advance advancement shouldn't the complexity will be more hidden uh, and our lives will be less complex Uh, Amog, I have also answered that question. This also question to answer. So I think only yeah, one yeah. question is pending. So it is very tough to navigate. Pardon me for the same. So the last question is there. There is always a pos positivity and every negativity. And how can someone turn VUCA into their own advantage? I think this is not a question you answered then. No. No one has answered. Yeah. yeah. It is not answered. Hi. Um, yeah. Actually, people shout at it, and maybe PP can join me. Um, and actually, it's a very good question. So thanks for asking. How can you how can you take VUCA to your own advantage? Um, didn't think of it in that perspective actually. Um, but as we as we spoke about these different in, uh, examples, Anand um, Arvind gave some beautiful examples. Um, uh, the 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 one example is is pandemic, which is happening around us, right? Um, uh, we all uh, were not very sure. Whether we will be ready, and and uh, I'm sure each and every one of us work in an organization where everybody went online, and we were surprised uh, to see that um, we we were able to survive, and we are actually pro possibly more productive, <laughs> especially when it comes to going back and forth in traffic. We've saved a lot of time uh, staying home and added more productivity there. Uh, but but to uh, but to give an example of how this has helped, there is uh, one. Um, uh, we were able to quickly connect online and now boundaries of location is not no longer uh, a problem anymore if i need to find a data scientist somewhere we were so limited to finding in, in that small vicinity around the boundaries but now i'm so it's 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 so natural that i can hire somebody from anywhere and that person can come in and help me so that specialization is now more open and we are we are open to that because something like huka happened to us and we we responded to that change and we learn from it and it helps us get better. So uh, you will always be privy to these uncertainties. You will always be privy to some volatile actions around you, uh, but how you take it uh, from there, uh, how you get your set of people and put that problem on the board. Let, let it not be just one problem that that leader has to solve. Let's all solve it together. In general, you will see people come together in, in the diversities. Uh, people try to be innovative. The scarcity and um, necessity is the mother of innovation and invention. So you will find new things that come to you as you find these uncertainties and you'll be challenged. And when I'm challenged, first thing I do is definitely brainstorm with my team. And together, we actually feel proud when we solve it. And 
we achieved yep. something from people angle and we solved something together and we used it to our advantage and i love to hear from other panelists how how they yeah. they've have used it as yeah, their I'd advantage. like to add, i'd like to add to mukda what mukda said uh, failure is a part of the process you know and if you if you understand fail fast is a mantra now i mean i mean that is how i mean everybody learns so basically uh, the what is unforgiving i mean is basically if you commit the same mistake again that is the only precaution that you need to take the rest all will fall in place yep yes thank you very much i think there is a same question uh, on the same line which has been raised by mr chetan jain uh, i think that question also will get answered because he has answered that it has is uh, so being vuka environment there is so much complexity it has its own rewards but there are chances of failure too how do we handle the failure and it is expensive to the organization so what mr anand was saying i i would like to add something on the uh, basically always when you are working on city there is always a risk but we should uh, if there is uncertainty it doesn't mean we will not address that risk right so we have to go and address that as there, there will be failure but we have to learn from the failure what agile says you know or any see we should do mistake we are human being we are not god so we can do the mistake but you should not do the same mistake again so that is where we should learn from the mistake where retrospectives are very important we should learn from the mistake yes risk may be expensive the 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 the, the problem which we did as if i did some mistake i should be very open enough to say this mistake i did but i should be more vigilant enough that i will not do the same mistake again that is where uh, the more more proactive and we should always try to see how continuous improvement is also always part of the entire journey we should always continuously see how overall ecosystem can be improved how the entire value chain can be improved these are all very important point in addressing this vuka work i'm going to add here yeah, yeah, yeah. i'd like to add here uh, basically uh, on what you were saying uh, i think it's very important to Start with uh, you know doing several prototypes and POCs, and then taking it to the clients and validating the idea, and ensuring that as part of your group who decides the features and functionalities, you also engage some power users, sales team who come up with great ideas, and this prototype or POC is actually tested with the clients before you go, move on to full-fledged development. So in this way, you're testing ideas, but you are also ensuring that you really don't go and develop and then fail. You know, you ensure that these are validated, user validations are extremely important. And, you know, once you do that, you are actually, you know, kind of ensuring uh, against very big failure. So, uh, you know, back to you. Thank you very much for uh, adding more insight on those particular topics. Uh, so I think if there are no questions, so uh, I request Priyank or Prashant or Rohit to, you know, uh, if they can able to uh, you know, uh, summarize and, you know, say in closing notes, basically, which I can request. Thanks. Thank you, Amo. Uh, it was an amazing watch. Uh, I was like lost in the conversation. Well, I I believe collectively you would be like some 200 years of experience, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe 150 to be more rational and logical here. <laughs> so yeah, you you're saying that we are old. Uh, no, no, I didn't. I said you're intellectual. <laughs> I said you have a mental age, not the the body. <laughs> I'm smart. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Priyank. <laughs> yes, you were brilliant. Okay, this was amazing conversation. Well invested time for I believe for everybody. A range of conversation um, uh, gone and navigated from you know for all I mentioned. Like you know, look at you. Like you know, you're all coming from different backgrounds and different experiences, and very wonderfully facilitated by Amo. So I want to thank the audience first uh, for you know. Uh, being with us on a Saturday and that's a very difficult choice whereas there are so many registered in hundreds and you know you were very precious to us and um, so uh, really really from bottom of my, of my heart I want to thank you uh, for attending today's session and I want to thank all the panelists going from the non-alphabetical order Anand, Amog and Pinky, Mugda and Arvind you have been amazing and we look forward for you know more and more collaboration with you and uh, looking forward for having you more often thank you very much thank you priyank for the opportunity yeah uh, thank you everyone yeah
Thank you. Thank you, Priyank. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks, Thanks Ian. Enjoy your evening. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.